What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. This is uh, the, the five-day tropical outlook we have. We have two areas of interest. The first one we're going to talk about is disturbance one, which is Invest 94L. The second area is this area that now has a 20% chance of uh, formation in the next five days. We're going to go ahead and talk about that first because we're going to go ahead and go in depth about Invest 94L once again as of 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, northwestern Gulf of Mexico. An area of low pressure could form early next week over the northern Gulf of Mexico. Any development of the system would be likely would likely be slow to occur as it drifts westward towards the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. 20% chance in the next five days. It's an area of interest we should pay attention to considering how close it is, how it's off the coast of Texas and Louisiana. But I don't think anything big is going to come out of it unless it like really develops at a very fast pace. Because the conditions are all there. If you take a look at the wind shear, uh, if you take a look at the wind shear at the Gulf, I'll actually go ahead and move that over. If we take a look at the wind shear for uh, for the Gulf, like it's pretty much uh, good for good enough for uh, good good development to happen. Now, with that being said, if we go ahead and take a look at the global sea temperatures, they're also really good. We're approaching 30 degrees Fahrenheit in a lot of these. Sorry, 30 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. That's below freezing at that point. Uh, 30 degrees Celsius is 86 degrees. So. Yeah, we have. That's a very interesting situation to take a look at. So it's a good area of interest to point out. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. I don't think anything's going to come of it, but only time will tell when it comes to that. The big story is Invest 94L, and while it doesn't look like that much right now, we do have a five-day area of interest of 60% chance development in the next five days, and that includes anywhere from here past the Windward Islands, uh, off the coast of Venezuela, and, and potentially approaching Central America, and I'll explain why in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and read this. Cloudiness and showers and... Uh, Sorry, cloudiness and showers have become a little more concentrated near a tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic Ocean. Environmental conditions appear conducive for development of the system over the next few days, and a tropical depression could form during the early to middle part of next week. This system is forecast to move at westward at 15 to 20 miles per hour over the tropical Atlantic, appro approach the Windward Islands on Tuesday, and move on to the um, into the southeastern caribbean sea by wednesday please excuse me formation chances now went up from 20 percent to 30 percent in the next 48 hours it is still at 60 percent in the next five days i think as time goes on that chance will go up as it gets more organized we're looking at it now while the storm while the cloud tops do not look as impressive as they did earlier it does look appear to be a little more concentrated as time goes on let's actually go ahead and go back to uh, go back to 90 frames just to show you the evolution of this and it's going to take a second yeah you can see that the rotate you can see that it does kind of calm down but that rotation does start to get a little more pronounced as time goes on we'll just have to wait and see what happens when it comes to that now let's go ahead and get to the current storm information its location is 8.3 degrees north 35.3 degrees west Maximum winds are 20 knots or about 25 miles per hour. Pressure is still 1,011 millibars. 100, uh, 100 uh, nautical miles maximum radius winds. Uh, radius of maximum winds, excuse me. So that's what we're looking at right here uh, with this. We're going to go over several of these models right here. Let's go ahead and talk about the track models. So uh, the majority of the models now have this thing potentially making landfall in Nicaragua seven days out. But this is seven days out once again, so we are a week ahead. We have, we're a week ahead, so we don't really know what's going on. But generally, every model has this thing making landfall in this in this particular area, which you don't see that a lot this far out. And another thing we're having some more agreement with is the intensity of this, because while a couple of them do have a major hurricane status, which again there is some doubt there, and I'll explain why. The, the majority of them now have it as a, a Category 1 hurricane as time goes on. So this has the potential of, of, of developing into a hurricane, but there is going to be some, there are some issues uh, with its initial development. And it's not really at the, right now, but it's kind of like in the middle phase, if you know what I mean. And I'll explain why. If we go back to our uh, shear map, we do look, it does look like the area where the system's going to go. It looks like the wind shear has calmed down quite a, a bit. It was at 50. Now we're at 40 to, thir uh, 40 to 30 to 40 knots right here. So it is starting to clear out. It is start The shear is starting to get better for this thing to kind of stay in place and develop. But we'll have to continue to pay attention to it as time goes on. It's still in really good conditions right here. It'll just have to organize. That's the only issue. The, the, good, the good news is, is that it's over plenty of warm water. If we take a look at it, it's through a very solid, a very solid 82 to 85, uh, 85 degrees uh, Fahrenheit area right here. Just 
Holy cow, look at how large this is. It spreads from the Atlantic Ocean all the way up, uh, all the way through the Caribbean Sea. We're seeing areas hotter than 84 degrees in parts of Cuba and that area. We're looking at uh, areas hotter than uh, approaching 90 degrees Fahrenheit off the, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico right here. So that's how warm these waters are. And now we have, uh, with that being said, with that out of the way, I wanna show you some of the mile runs that are indicating this, what this thing's going to do. This is the h mile mile. We're gonna run this, the GFS, and the, and the H wharf, because that's basically the three miles. We have the CMC as well, which I'll go ahead and run as well, but it does, it has it going way off course as time goes on. So yeah, it's it's not always a reliable, uh, reliable instrument when it comes to like a track wise. So that's why I don't always use it. So as time goes on, it starts to develop and it's gonna take a few days for sure. And then it's gonna, it's just gonna stay there. And then it's slowly going to in uh, intensify it's now at 1,004 millibars. It probably, it'll probably become a tropical storm if, you, if this is correct around here. Actually, yeah, it becomes a tropical storm earlier than that, but just it's not that concentrated in the center. And, and as time goes on, then we have the, this potential the maximum uh, winds at 850 or 73 knots. So that's probably a strong tropical storm right there. So it's going to take a while. And then it's eventually going to intensify into a hurricane if the HMON is correct as it approaches the Windward Islands. Uh, past the Windward Islands, potentially, see, potentially seeing those hurricane uh, force winds, but then it starts to encounter that shear right there. So it's gonna, it's basically going to calm down the winds for a bit, and then it starts to develop. It starts to intensify again, and this is where we are now. This is off. This is five and a half days out. Uh, right now, a pressure 990. We're looking at a Category 1 hurricane with this thing right here, if, if the HMON is correct. So we'll have to pay attention to this. The next one we're going to go ahead and talk about is the CMC right here. We're going to go ahead and talk about You see this goes way off course as time goes on. This passes through Jamaica and eventually makes landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula. But we'll actually talk about its development. It has it developing. It actually has it developing at a rather quick pace at this time. And kind of like similar to the HMON, it has this thing becoming a hurricane off the coast, off the Windward Islands, and then it just continues to kind of go its course, and then it continues, it starts to kind of, it just doesn't really intensify that much. It kind of just stays its course. It's kind of, st it maintains its intensity as it approaches, approaches uh, the Yucatan, and then it, it basically is in the Bay of Campeche. I do not think that is going to happen. I am confident enough to say that that's not going to happen because this because the CMC like deviates very far off from its original course. Let's go ahead and talk about the GFS with this thing as well. As you can see, it moves on. It kind of takes its time developing, and eventually it'll develop. Develop. It actually doesn't develop even until after the Windward Islands, most likely due to that shear, it's actually taking that into consideration. Eventually it becomes a tropical storm, and then eventually it, it becomes a small hurricane, and if this model is correct, it makes landfall when, uh, with a 986 pressure as a Category 1 hurricane in Nicaragua, and it actually has us moving out into the Pacific Ocean, which that happens, that would be an interesting case to follow at that point. So, okay, didn't mean to do that. So we'll have to pay attention to that, but the most aggressive model, as usual, is the H wharf, and we're gonna go ahead and see what it says. And it actually has this kind. Of, actually, the latest model run isn't ready yet, so we'll actually use an older one. Is uh, an older one, is, and we'll update you guys as that comes in. And then it kind of just really actually intensifies to a hurricane in two and a half days, which there's major doubt here unless this thing like really rapidly organizes, which. At this point, it's probably not going to happen unless something huge hap unless something huge happens, and then it just really kind of maintains its co maintains its course, uh, passes the Windward Islands as usual, and then it continues to intensify. Drops its lowest at, as of now is 969 millibars. I think if at this point it's too early for me to say, but if it does become a hurricane, it's going to probably be a Category One. That's my thinking when I see this right here. Now, uh, now, when we look at these models right, uh, right here, the most aggressive models have this at Cat 3 major hurricane status. Is it possible? Yes, but that wind shear in the area has to come down considerably before that happens. Now, if it comes down to a point where it's like 25 knots or s something that's more manageable for this thing, it's possible. But at this point, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything that this thing's gonna be a major hurricane because it's too early to say. But what I am going to say is that this thing has a very good chance of developing, and we could see a hurricane out of this. 
But with that being said, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out and helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather, which is what I am hoping I am doing with these videos. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button down below. It is much appreciated. We are closing in on 730 subscribers, so I want to say thank you for all the, the people that have been subbing to my channel recently. But with that being said, guys, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.